Greetings, I'm the Bulgarian Troglodyte. Today I'm gonna talk about all things contemporary cinema. I've listed some bullet points here of topics that I'm gonna cover in this video. So this is a video that I've been wanting to do for quite a while, because I think I have quite a lot of thoughts about contemporary cinema, and my thoughts have also changed a little bit in the recent years. But hopefully this will be fairly cohesive. This video might end up being like very incoherent, even though I planned it out a little bit. But we'll see how it goes. And of course, let me know your thoughts about contemporary cinema or any of the things that I'm gonna talk about today. Anyway, the first bullet point that I put here is that why I don't complain about modern cinema as much anymore. And the reason is that, again, I'm 27 years old. I think I shouldn't be too negative about current culture. I don't want to sound like a boomer when I'm 27 years old. And I've also realized that there are so many films today that are coming out all the time. And I don't watch that many of them. So I really shouldn't have that big of a opinion about contemporary cinema when I don't just watch enough of it. And I think maybe the best films that are coming out today are ones that I haven't seen. And I might discover those best films like two years from now, a decade from now. Because of course it's really hard to discover the best films when they're coming out. There might be some films that go under the radar, but then people realize a decade later that, oh, that is actually the best film of 2024 and not the film that we talked about back then. And again, there are more films coming out now than ever before, so that again means that it's harder to find the best stuff, even though we live in this very connected world where you hear reviews and stuff all the time. And of course, I always try to look out for the lesser known films as well, but I don't put as, as much effort into finding the lesser known films that are coming out today than I do for 1960s, for example, or whatever. But yeah, I've tried to be a bit more positive about contemporary cinema. Again, as I, in the end, I'm a bit ignorant about it, and I think I'm sure there are many great films coming out today that I just haven't seen yet. And also, I'm someone who again loves music, and I love contemporary music, although I love older music as well, but I listen to dozens of albums that are coming out every year, and I like so many of them and love many of them. I think music is doing so great currently, so that kind of makes me think that probably cinema is doing good currently as well, but I just haven't seen many of the best films that are coming out now again, like I said. Yeah, but it's hard to say. But then the next bullet point that I put here is that it's hard to find great films, but there are plenty of good films. So I think it's really easy to find those kind of 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 types of good films. But it's quite rare for me to find new like 5 star favorites out of the films that have been coming out in the last few years. Although actually I realized today that 2023 has actually been pretty great for me because I think three films from that year have already become all-time favorites. And I haven't watched that many films from 2023, so that's pretty impressive. Those three films are All of Us Strangers, Perfect Days, and Blue Giant. Of course, I put a couple of them here. Yeah. And Blue Giant I'm actually going to talk about in an upcoming anime slash manga video that will come out soon, so look out for that. So yeah, so there are great films coming out today as well, but yeah, it's really hard for me to discover those really great films. And then the next topic is that best films are made outside of the US. Although to be honest, I think it has almost always been the case since like the 50s, maybe. Because even again in the 50s, of course, there are many great American films, but when, when you put them next to The Human Condition or Sons of the Bailey for the best films of Japan, for example, yeah, they look like absolute pieces of shit, to be honest. But they really lack the type of depth 
the best films of Japan, for example, have all the best best French films have more often than not. Yeah, but especially in contemporary times, I think the best films are made outside of the U.S. and also outside of the U outside of Europe. I think, yeah, like I put here, that European cinema is doing poorly as well. But let's stick to U.S. for a little while. So. Yeah, I cannot think of a single American director working today that I absolutely love. I guess Scorsese, Paul Tom, and Paul Thomas Anderson were directors that I used to really love, but I've kind of grown out of them, their films. And they, their films aren't that interesting to me, and they are quite formulaic. Yeah, not, not just very interesting to me. Again, both of them are good directors, but I think they are overhyped. Yeah. And then there, there aren't really any new American directors that I'm that excited about either. I mean, I have some like minor excitement for some directors, like again, Barry Jenkins, I really liked Moonlight. But then um, Beal Street, I wasn't that big of a fan of. So, so with Barry Jenkins, I'm again thinking that like whether he's gonna make like many great films or whether Moonlight is always gonna be the best film that he made. So we'll see. Again, he hasn't made that many stuff, much stuff, and I haven't seen the TV show that he made that he come out on came out on Criterion. So I want to see that one. And I haven't seen Medicine for Melancholy either. So we'll see. But there are many of those types of directors that maybe make like one, like nine nine out of ten type of film, like a really great film borderline masterpiece, but then they don't make many other great films. I think the perfect example of this is Damien Chazelle. I absolutely love Whiplash, but then his career has went downhill after that, in my opinion, although I haven't seen Babylon yet, so I can comment on that. But La La Land is a good film, but it's kind of like the bastardization of one of my favorite films of all time, The Umbrella of Cherbourg. Then he made First Man, which is that kind of bone try really planned um, biopic, a typical American biopic that makes you want to kill yourself because they are so bone dry. <laughs> yeah, but it, it wasn't a bad movie, but not very good either. And that's just not my, my type of movie in general. Yeah. But I think European cinema is doing pretty poorly as well currently, although I have to mention that I feel like I haven't seen enough European films from the past couple of decades to say say that for certain. But the ones that I have seen, it's really it's been pretty mediocre, and many of the films are kind of good films at best. But but it's really hard to find like French films or German films or Italian films that are like really amazing these days, especially when you compare them to the glory days of the 50s, 60s, and that stuff. Yeah, but maybe again, I just haven't seen the right stuff and maybe I just need to watch more to find out the best stuff coming out from European countries these days. Really the only European director working today that I absolutely love is Aki Kaurismäki, again from my country of Finland. I think he is such a great filmmaker and I absolutely love him. He's one of my top 10 filmmakers, but I can't really think of other people from any European country working today that I absolutely love. Yeah, even Pelatar is retired. Oh, I forgot Petro Costa that I actually put here, but he, his stuff I really like. He's from Portugal, I think, so yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I might just be too ignorant about current European cinema to say for certain, so definitely I want to put that disclaimer on that topic. But then I have one like pro about current cinema and then kind of one con about current cinema. But the one good thing about contemporary cinema is of course there is more representation and obviously less problematic stuff as well. So it's good that these days we can have more films about women and about people of color and about queer people and also the representation of those groups is better now than what they used to be. There are less stereotypes now and the 
representation is more complex and more authentic. Although, of course, there are still many problems with representation these days. And we can still fall into like stereotypes and stuff, even though it has got the better in that front. But I think it's really good that we can see a variety of different types of people in films because it teaches you empathy, it teaches you how to understand people that are different than you. And I just love seeing again different types of people and their perspectives on film and in art. So that's really good. And again, as I think our culture has progressed a lot from the past, so there is less problematic stuff. So you won't see white people in blackface anymore. And you won't see um, again those stereotypes as much as I, that I talked about. And there are many good things, cultural things going on currently. Although, of course, there is huge conservative movements that want to um, take us backwards, but hopefully they don't succeed, even though sometimes it feels like they will succeed, unfortunately, because people are so stupid, but what can you do? But yeah, that is, that's one pro, I think, but then a con is lack of originality, and I think this is something that many people can agree on. And then I just put here 824 Art House for Dummies, I just saw that comment recently on one YouTube video that somebody said that A24 is like art house for dummies and that made me laugh and I actually really agree with that but let's talk about the lack of originality first so every time I watch an art house film now it's coming out now I when I watch them I always start thinking about oh this reminds me of these five films that were made in the past and the films in the past did this thing better and in a more daring way and that's really sad that that happens almost all the time. Although I kind of understand the lack of originality in a way, because of course, as years go by, more and more films have been done. It's harder and harder to be original when everything has been done. Again, all types of plots have been written. All types of, all types of visual styles have been used. So of course, it's going to get harder and harder to innovate. But I think there must be something new that we could do. And of course, there are these small things, new things that people do, but it's really hard to find anything that's like completely original. And maybe that's just impossible at that at this point anyway. But I would think that the current technology and stuff, somebody could make like a like a amazing sci-fi film that has never been done before, like some like proper space exploration stuff with current technology and stuff. But it seems like Nobody's really willing to do that, or at least the talented directors aren't willing to do that, or maybe they don't have the opportunity to do that. And I think there's so much potential for horror as well, but I think again, it's often the case that like, I think there's lots of potential for sci-fi and horror, but the best people just don't work on those genres usually, so then we don't end up getting the great stuff from those genres. Yeah. But then A24, again, I like A24 films, I like many of them, but they always feel like that they are so safe and they never like truly challenge the viewer. They are, of course, always like more challenging than your average Marvel movie and stuff, but they just don't have the balls to really go all out and really challenge the viewer and their taste. So I really think that they are kind of can be art house films. They are very safe and dumb for the most part but they are still like again good films they aren't bad but they are quite dumb when you compare them to like Tarkovsky or like the best filmmakers of all time yeah so I'm not very excited when I see a new A24 film coming out because you just know before watching it what they're gonna be like yeah but then I put a list here of some of the best directors working today but again this is in the complete list but such just some names that came to my mind. So we have Ruizuke Hamaguchi, who is a director that I'm very excited about. I love his style. And you can see in his films that, yeah, he has that Eric Rome thing going for him and also that John Cassavetes thing going for him, but he 
even though you can see the influence, you can see that he also has his own thing going for him. So I like that type of stuff. Then we have Hong Sang Soo, who is actually a very similar type of director to Hamakuchi, as they make films where people talk and not much happens. And I love that type of films. Then we have Sion Sono. And I know there's some like problematic things about him that we've heard in the last couple of years of him, like I think sexually harassing uh, like female actors in the sets and stuff. So, so yeah, so, so I've kind of lost the taste for his him in that way that I don't really re respect him as a person anymore. But I still like his films a lot. Yeah. And I don't really know what happened with those allegations and stuff. I haven't followed it too much, but it's always so sad when you hear like a director or artist that you really like doing something awful. Yeah. But I can usually look past that because I think me not watching the films because the director is a problematic person doesn't really change anything. It will just make my life worse if I don't let myself enjoy films that I like watching. But I think there's always the counter argument that people make that you shouldn't support bad people and I can get that as well. And I, I mean, I haven't monetarily supported Sion Sono anyway. So yeah, but anyway, that's a topic for another day. Then we have Shinya Chukamoto, a fairly similar director to Shinya Sion Sono. Yeah, he's really good, but I like Sono more. Then we have the great Turkish director Nuri Bilge Ceylan. I think he is definitely one of the absolute best working today. He makes such interesting slow cinema films. Absolutely love his stuff. Then we have Aki Kaurismäki, who I already mentioned. Then we have Kiyoshi Kurosawa. But I think with him, much of his best stuff came out in the late 90s, early to mid 2000s. But I think he's still making good stuff, probably. I have some of his later films ready to go. I haven't watched them yet. So yeah, we'll see about that. Then we have Chiming Liang, the great, weird Taiwanese director. Love his stuff. Hopefully, he will continue to make films. Then we have Xia Changke, a Chinese director. I actually kind of struggle with his films a bit. I have only seen a few, but I can tell with his films that they are really great, but they are very challenging, I think. Then we have Hirokachu Koreda. I finally watched Monster yesterday. I thought it was a really great, great movie. Really enjoyed that one. And something a bit different for him, but I think he's one of the best directors working today. Then we have Petro Costa, who I think is actually a very unique filmmaker and makes very interesting, very challenging films. Yeah. And then the final topic I put here is kind of capitalism. Because, of course, one of the reasons or one of the things in the world that often has a negative effect on all types of art is capitalism, because if some type of art doesn't make profit, it often doesn't get funding. And that art might be the best art, but again, as the average person isn't gonna get into it, it just doesn't get money. And then we need these artists that are willing to kind of live a poorer life and really go all out towards their artistic goals or whatever, artistic dreams, even though they aren't going to make money. But I think if these weirder art projects would get funding, whether they would make profit or not, we would get way more great artists, because then more people would be willing to create that weirder art if they knew that they would at least get a living for it. But then there's this other big thing about capitalism is that, again, when people have to work all the time and people have to constantly worry about how they're going to make a living and what they're going to do next, and they have to prepare for the worst, obviously that creates so much stress, so much negativity in your brain, then you just, in your free time, you only want escapism and you don't have the energy for the intelligent stuff. So I think actually way more people were willing, would be willing to watch more challenging films if they just didn't have to worry as much about these real life things about work, like work and things like that. So there's so many things that 
capitalism ruins when it comes to art. Although, of course, there are some good things about it as well. But, but yeah, many things that it kind of ruins when it comes to films and other art forms. Yeah. But anyway, those were some of my thoughts about contemporary cinema. Of course, there are many other things that I could have covered, but there's some things for you. And definitely let me know your thoughts about any of these things I mentioned here or any other things that I maybe I missed or any anything you want to say about contemporary cinema or if you want to recommend me some films that came out in the last few years, that would be great as well. Again, I haven't watched enough, but I try to correct that in the future. But yeah, thanks for watching. Don't drink coke at all. Sayonara and arigato gozaimasu.